morning, morning star. This is the day that the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, if I just be truthful, I had a hard time getting started this morning. Anybody ever have to jump start? <laughs> I, I got up and I really didn't feel like coming to church. I'm, I'm just being truthful. And I sit there, and on my iPad, I got a list of songs. And the song that came up was Holy Spirit Fall Fresh on Me. And I got to listening to the song. And after a while, something started moving. I'm being truthful to you. And after a while, you find yourself sometimes all alone. And, and tears are falling, and ain't nobody messing with you. Ain't, you. You don't see nothing going on wrong. But I just believe that sometimes he want to get close to you. And he wants you to get close to him. And we talk about praise his name, I think. Yeah, if, if, if we praise him this morning, I tell you, something's going to happen. Let, let me just tell you one more thing before I sit down. I think somewhere he said that the Holy Spirit will blow on you. And you don't know where it's going and don't know where it's coming from. But I do know this. If you horse yourself, he'll take you to where God wants you to be. God bless you. Let's give God some praise this morning. And speaking of giving him praise this morning, that's what we getting ready to do. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship on one accord. You got to be on accord. If you're on accord, we can fight anything that the devil is trying to give to us. You agree this morning? Amen. Let's give God some praise. Come on.
Heavenly Father, we come at this hour to thank you, oh God, for waking us up this morning. Father, bless us to reflect back just yesterday to where we are right now at this moment. We thank you for the many rich and wonderful blessings on this day. Thank you for bringing us out to the house of worship one more time. To praise your holy and precious name. Oh God, we thank you for our families this morning and just a portion of our health and our strength. Lord God, deliver us from evil this morning. Bless us to go forward and give you our very best because you so richly deserve it. And Lord God, uh, we're asking that those of us that are here that may be in need of prayer, a healing, love, just a touch, oh God, allow it to be in your name. And Father, we ask prayer for all of us that are here this morning and all of those that are viewing via social media. Oh God, bless this word. Bless our pastor as he brings forth this the word from on high. Bless his family. Keep us all in your keeping care. Lord, go with us today. Bless those that are sick and shut in this morning or unable to attend. Oh God, we just ask for those that are bereaving this morning. Touch them, Father. Keep your arms around them and comfort them during that time of having to have lost them. Oh, God, I pray that today something will be said or done and that you will receive all the honor and glory. This prayer we pray in the matchless name of he that is able, Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for joining in our devotion this morning and uh, pray that you all will have a blessed day in the word this morning. Good morning. Good morning, church family and friends. We are the Johnson family. I am Paulette. This is our son, Jonathan, and this is the king of our home, our beloved pastor, John Johnson, and our daughter, Joy Nicole, should be online. Um, so we, we are humbled for this opportunity to welcome you to worship on today. And at this time, we would like for those that are visiting with us to please stand. Do we have any visitors today? Okay. Looks like we're all uh, family or returning friends, but we are so pleased that, that you have joined us in worship today. And for those that are visiting online, if, if Joy is online, she's probably dropping you a welcome at this point. And if you'd like to be recognized, just come in on her post or give her a like or, or some way to let us know that you're um, joining us and we appreciate your attendance. And I would say that those of you who are not members but you attend all the time, we welcome you to join with us at Morning Star Baptist Church. And also, you know, sometimes we come to church all the time, but we may not really have a relationship with the Lord. I tell you, this is God, I'm welcoming you to God's house. This is our church, but this is God's house. And his presence is here. He is able to meet every need that you have. If you need salvation, I would implore you to take this opportunity to make Jesus your choice. Um, he, this is a great day for starting a new 
life in Christ Jesus. So I invite you to worship him today in spirit and in truth. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to lay aside our weights, all of our cares, and just have a good time in the Lord. And we know our pastor's going to preach. We're going to get a word from him that's going to take us on through the week. So be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. take time to recognize those of you who are celebrating birthdays. If you're celebrating a birthday in the month of October, would you stand? congregation on the third Sunday in this month, the uh, third Sunday in October, uh, we'll be uh, recognizing uh, breast cancer awareness, and so we ask that you would dress out in your peak uh, in the observance of breast cancer awareness, and, and again, that will be the third Sunday of this month, and uh, we invite you to share with us in that manner. This time, uh, we're going to move on in our service, and we'll be blessed in music by our church choir.
when the trumpet sounds. Oh, I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. 
don't know about you, but I can testify. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. There are a lot of choices out there, but I've decided that can't nobody do me like Jesus. God, our Father, we come once again just to tell you thank you, God. God, you've been so good and you, you've been so kind. And oh God, you didn't just start there, but all of our lives, you've been good to us, oh God. And God, uh, we know that we have fallen along the way, oh God. And we've come short of your glory, oh God. But God, thank you for forgiving us, uh, giving us the ability to rise from our falling and stand with one who will stand with us. God, I ask now that you would, oh God, minister to us today, oh God. We need a word from heaven, oh God. We pray that you would set our hearts afire, God. God, I ask, even as I stand, I lift up, oh God, uh, Sister Deborah Pingle, uh, the daughter of Sister Slocum, and I ask that even in her hospital room, that you will lay your hands upon her, oh God. Doctors don't know what to do or how to treat it, but oh God, I pray for divine revelation, oh God. Uh, Master, that you would order their steps, oh God. And Master, oh God, I pray for healing in your name, oh God. And, and then God, uh, I come uh, lifting up the sister of Sister Thomas, oh God. And you created her in your image and know all there is to know about her. And God, I pray that you would visit her this day, oh God. Let her know that you are present help, even in the time of trouble, oh God. And God, uh, we lift up uh, uh, the husband of Sister Franklin, Brother Roy, and God. And, and God, I ask that you would lay your healing hands upon him, oh God. You are able, God, to do all things but fail, oh God. And God, uh, I, I lift up comforting uh, spirit, oh God, upon Deacon Buckley and his family and the loss of his mom, oh God, and God, but we know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come early in the morning, oh God, comfort and keep them in a time like this. God, we lift up, oh God, Deaconess Jones to you, oh God, and uh, Pray your healing hands upon her, O oh God. Uh, pray for Deacon Carnell Ketchings, O oh God, and pray your healing hands upon him. And, O oh God, if there be any other who are sick, O oh God, Master, O oh God, touch right now, Lord Jesus. Any other families that are bereaved, we pray for your comfort and your strength. God, do it now as you has done before, O oh God. Master, minister, and we'll be faithful to give you glory to give you honor, and to give you praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to invite your attention this morning uh, to the gospel, or excuse me, to the book of Exodus. Exodus uh, chapter 14. I want to read down verses 1 through 14. I want to start a new series today that we'll be working on throughout the month. And we're delighted to have Reverend Carson with us on this morning, and uh, Reverend Jackson is back with us. And uh, Reverend Jackson, I uh, I told the church uh, that you inspired us the other Sunday when you preached, and uh, I owe you a paycheck because I preached two more sermons after that, <laughs> and that was because of you. And we we certainly appreciate you. Amen. I think I shared with you all a couple of weeks ago, the Lord has been real, dealing with me on, on, a, on a topic, and, uh, and I'm still trying to figure it out, but I know God done already worked it out. But uh, this is the, the first piece of that. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before uh, Pihazroth, uh, which is between Migdal, uh, Migdal and the sea, and over against Bahasaphon, uh, before it shall uh, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, and in the wilderness have shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts. And the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people. And they said, we have done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariots and took his people with him and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh the king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out from a uh, with an high hand but the Egyptian pursued after them and all the horses and chariots and of pharaohs and of his horsemen and of his army and overtook them in camping by the sea of Pahareth before Bahazaphon. And when the pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were all so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone? that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he has shown you to this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Amen. Thus ended the reading. You may be seated in his presence. The grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For just a few minutes, if the Holy Spirit would allow me, I just want to talk about measuring your faith. Measuring your faith. Today I'm going to outline this whole text, and then uh, over the few weeks we're going to add some meat to it. Uh, but I want to suggest to you, uh, Moses is the centerpiece here in uh, Moses was a man after God's own heart. God, God favored Moses even from a little babe. You remember uh, that the, uh, his mother put him in a little basket and ultimately would be moved to Pharaoh's house and he would be raised among the great king of that day and of that time. And, 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 and in Pharaoh's house, uh, uh, he would be given uh, great platitudes and to, uh, he had every uh, 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 opportunity to be trained as great men of that nation and uh, Moses uh, uh, actually grew up and, and, uh, and, and ultimately Moses would kill a man uh, uh, who were uh, 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 ultimately um, interfering in the process of his 
of his own kindred. And, and, and the Bible says that Moses found himself on the backside of a mountain. And I, I don't know where you had to go to to get to the backside of a mountain. But, but, but Moses was in a place where he and he and God was alone. And, and, and I, I've shared with you uh, uh, many times that uh, there's something powerful when you and God can get along. Uh, when, when you can get with God all by yourself. And I want to suggest you, you don't even have to be on the backside of the mountain uh, to get along with God. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, but, but he, he got it. He, uh, God ministered to him. And uh, you, uh, you remember there were many uh, occasions where God used the even the fire uh, to light that, that God will be seen even in the midst of the fire. And, uh, and, and the Bible says he uses, he uses Moses and, and that, that Moses drew near unto God. But the Bible says that God gave a word to Moses and, and tells Moses to go back to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And, uh, uh, and, and, and I think it was powerful that God would choose Moses because if anybody knew how to talk Pharaoh's language, Moses could. Moses grew up in the house. He knew Pharaoh. But, but, but listen, y'all, a number of things happen. And uh, for sake of today's message, the Bible says that he tells Pharaoh uh, to let his people go. There's a whole exercise that's processed in there. And the Bible says that ultimately Pharaoh agrees and allows the children of Israel to depart in their freedom. And the Bible says that these children of Israel leave Egypt. But y'all, they didn't leave as peasants. Huh? But they left with silver and gold. They had uh, bracelets and watches. And the Bible says that they raised their hand at Egypt as they departed out of the land. Uh, listen, they rejoiced in that day. And, and, and the Bible says that they were on their way to the promised land. But the Bible says something happened. Huh? That on their way headed to the promised land, they ran into a, a pathway that was blocked. Uh, uh, they couldn't get over, couldn't get across it. And that path was the Red Sea. And the, the Bible says that they get to the place that uh, they had no way to cross over. And, and the Bible says that they stop there and they have a conversation about God. My brothers and sisters, I would argue that sometimes life can put you in a situation where you have roadblocks and you wonder, God, how did I get to this point that is so far from where I want it to be? And my brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes, y'all, uh, you got to be careful uh, because sometimes we say God led us, God moved us, and yet I get to the Red Sea and I cry, can't cross over. God, why did you let me come? Sometimes when God delivers us and brings us out, we shout with joy and exclamation and we're, we're excited about God's blessing us. But what happens when we come to the roadblock? I tell you what happened to them. The Bible says they began to look at this thing and they said something is wrong. How could you let us leave Egypt and end up in this place? How can you allow us to be blessed on that side and get over here and can't get in? Oh, help me somebody. How can you allow me to get through school uh, uh, graduate from school and then I can't get a job. How can you allow me to marry this man and marry this woman? We're excited about marriage, but we can't have no baby. What do you do when your expectation is on one side and yet you find doors closed on the other side? They found, they found themselves there. And the Bible says that their whole posture changes them. They began to question Moses. And, and, and listen, and Moses realized that question to him wasn't necessarily to him, but it was about God. 
And my brothers and sisters, sometimes, y'all, that we get upset with God because I've been in this place and I thought you would have healed me by now, but things are getting worse instead of getting better. People start questioning God, uh, uh, because this child that I raised and, and I thought that he was going to be this and I thought she was going to be that, but it didn't turn out like I prayed for. What do you do? And the Bible says they began to question Moses about God. And, and, and no, notice y'all, and I, I promise you I'm going to run on. The Bible says they began to have conversation like, uh, uh, I told you before we left Israel. Uh, before we left Egypt, I, I told you that I didn't need to go nowhere. I could stay right here. I was making uh, 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 hay out of straw and I was doing all this, but I was all right where I am. And listen, sometimes, y'all, sometimes, y'all, uh, when, when you run into stumbling blocks of life, we began to look back in the past and we claimed the past was better than it was. And my brothers and sisters, I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you got to acknowledge back what I did back then. It wasn't all that they make it to be right now. But listen, thanks be to God that where I am is better than where I was 30 years ago. The Bible says that they began to complain. Uh, matter of fact, the, the Bible says that, that, that while they were there, they looked and they noticed Pharaoh's army was coming behind them. And then they began to say, listen, if we'd have stayed in Egypt, they got graves even in Egypt, and yet you bring us out here to die. And listen, y'all, I, I, I want to suggest, y'all, some folk, you, you ever met some folk, they're very ungrateful. <laughs> no matter how much you do, they think you ought to do so much more. <laughs> Never say thank you. Never acknowledge. They just think you ought to do what you do. But listen, my brothers and sisters, Moses then led them out. And, and listen, they, they got stuff they never had before in their life. And yet they are still blaming and cursing God. Listen, y'all. Uh, uh, they said that, that doesn't Egypt have grace? We could have died right there. We could have stayed right there. And, and listen, my brothers and sisters, I want to suggest, y'all, that God is big enough to handle our questions. Listen, when you don't understand a thing, God, God is big enough, y'all, uh, to, to handle the things that we don't understand. But listen, my brothers and sisters, there's one thing of questioning God, but there's another thing of being mad, upset, angry, and quarreling with God. And my brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes in, in life we want to bargain with God. If you do this, then I will do. Can I help somebody there? I got the T-shirt for that one. I know what that is like. But I, I want to suggest to you, y'all, what God does is God will put you in a position where you have to do what he says first and then... <laughs> God is always the winner on that side. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, don't quarrel with God. If you don't understand, ask God, and God will give the revelation. Yeah. And listen, my brothers and sisters, sometimes he just doesn't give you an answer, but he'll take you through it so that you can understand, had it not been for the Lord on my side. Listen, listen, listen. Sometimes, sometimes we ask God for patience. Uh, but listen, my brothers and sisters, he doesn't just teach us patience. He doesn't just give us a word. But sometimes he'll take us through some experience where patience are needed. And we gain, listen, 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 y'all. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 one of the first things that we see here is their posture. Uh, that they, they, they began to quarrel. They began to check uh, a, 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 a question. They began to doubt God, and, and, and I want to speak to somebody this morning. Just, just, just when you get to that point where robots in your way, you don't understand. Listen, whatever you do, don't doubt God. You, you want to, you want to see your faith increase. Trust Him when you don't know what to do. 
rely on him when nothing seems like it. Listen, listen, you know what I learned, y'all? Is that there's some things it's only gonna change if God changes it. I, I, I believe that in my whole heart, y'all, that, that, that there's something will only change if God changes. Can, can I go just a little bit further, y'all? There's some folk who oh, help me somebody. I don't care how hard you pray. I don't care how hard you try to live and do right for them. They won't change until God himself changes them. And you know what, y'all? I know that. Because God changed me one day. <laughs> Listen, the same God that changed your life will ultimately have to change their lives as well. Listen, y'all, uh, can, can I tell you, uh, can I tell you, uh, listen to how, how Moses responds. And, and I promise you, I'm going to say this and, I, and I'm done. I'll finish the next week. The Bible says they, they're doing all this calling. They're doing all this talking. Now, now listen, y'all, these are the same folk now. That just a little while ago, they were praising, they were copping, they were showing off their, their jury and their, all the stuff that they've gained from this. Yes, all of a sudden, yes, they see their army coming. Yes, it, it, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says, the Bible says the army is coming. But y'all, y'all, if y'all go back and look at the text, the army comes because God sent it. Oh, help me somebody. What kind of God will deliver me and send the same army after me? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, even, even stranger, y'all, the Bible says Pharaoh had let them go. But God sent a message to Pharaoh. And the text says, and changed his heart. His heart became Pharaoh that said, let them go. All of a sudden said, let's go get them. And he does so because God did it. Oh, help me somebody. How can a God that says he loves me will allow something bad to happen to me? And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, read the text, y'all. I'm not, I'm not making this up, y'all. But the Bible says that he does so that he may get the glory out of it. But no, 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 shit. When Pharaoh goes after them, he gets his best horsemen. He gets his best captains. He gets all of his chariots. Oh, oh, bless his name. And they all run after the children of Israel. The children of Israel now see and hear them coming. And they got his army on one side and the sea on the other side. And where can we go? This is what Moses says. This is the Moses that was on the backside of the mountain. This is the Moses that killed the man. This is the Moses that came and said, let my people go. Moses says, whatever you do, he says, don't panic. He says, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen, my brothers and sisters. You don't say them kind of words until you spend some time with God. You don't say those kind of words until you had your faith matured by God. And I want to say to somebody this morning is that God may be your Lord and your Savior, but what needs to happen is that our faith needs maturing. We need to come to a point where we can trust God even when we don't see him. I know what the doctor said. I know what the lawyer said. I know what they said on my job. But God ultimately has the last word. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, sometime we've got to, we've got to do what Moses tells the children. Is He said, number one, don't panic. And listen, my brothers and sisters, I would argue, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to get us off our game. He wants to take out. And the one, the first thing he wants to do is to challenge our faith. But I want to argue, y'all, that's the reason why your faith has to be more than just church, y'all. Your faith has to be more than just serving on the nursery board, serving in the nursery, singing in the choir, preaching in the pulpit. Your faith has to be more than that. You need something that will sustain you greater than even when I'm not in morning Star Baptist Church. 
I need a faith. I need a faith. And, and, and Moses says that I, I've seen the Lord a number of times now. And, uh, and he says that, number one, he says, don't be panicking. Don't, don't fear. But, but notice here, y'all. If you read the text, nowhere do they say that they are afraid. They just upset. But Moses says, you are upset because you're fearful. So he says, number one, don't be, don't be fearful. And, and, and listen, y'all, I, I, I don't mean no harm, and I'm not switching up text, but don't that sound like Jesus? Whenever they were going through, whenever they didn't understand, that's the first thing Jesus would say is don't be afraid. Walking on the water, don't know where the storm came from, don't know how to handle the Lord. Jesus wakes up and he says, don't be afraid. <laughs> Peter walking on the water, he says, don't be afraid. He said, but, but notice here, he says, secondly, he says, stand. Oh, oh, oh. my brothers and sisters, sometimes, y'all, you need to be in a place where you just stop where you are. <laughs> my, my family uh, have, have a word, you're doing too much. Sometimes, y'all, because you don't know what to do, you're doing this and you're dabbling in that. You're trying to find this quick fix and you're trying to find that quick fix. And listen, uh, I'm going to September where I, I could get $750. And, and then it costs you $1,200 to get that money paid back. Listen, before you try to fix it, stand still. My grandma would say, be still, boy. <laughs> and, I, and I would argue, I would argue, I would argue, y'all. There's something you can hear if you dare be still. See, sometimes when you're moving about and you listening to everybody and everybody got a word for you to, to tell you how to get it. Listen, sometimes you need to just be still and listen to God. He, 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 says, he says, not only don't fear, be still. He says, you got to see the salvation of the Lord. Y'all, that's, that's hard to do when Pharaoh's arm is right behind you. That's hard to do when the Red Sea is before you and you can't go nowhere. What do you do when I'm in between places? Listen, God says, don't worry yourself. Don't panic in the process. Don't fear. He says, just be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Y'all, y'all, one, one, one last point in here, and, and I promise you I'm done, is that I want you to see, uh, I want you to see, see these people that panic. But then I also want you to see Moses' partridge. But then finally, I want you to see God's promises. The Bible says that, that, that he, he promises them something really powerful in this. He, he says, Moses says, stand still. <clears throat> he says, I want you to see the salvation of the Lord. The Bible says, he says, which he will show you this day. Oh, blessed be God. Listen, God, God, God's fit to do it right now. But listen, you are missing if you don't stand still. You are, you are interrupt the flow of God if you don't be quiet. Be still. And see, notice here what he says. For the Egyptians who you see today, you won't see them no more. Huh? L listen, listen, y'all. Uh, I, I would argue. Uh, I, I told you that he brought all his captains. He brought all his chariots. Uh, listen, God set it up so that uh, Pharaoh would get so angry, so hard-hearted, that he brought all of his arsenal. Oh, oh, I wish you could see it. I can see it. Everything that the enemy had in hand to destroy you, he brought it all to one place. And he said, and these you will see no more. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we want to kill our enemy. Sometimes we want to uh, destroy their name. But listen, sometimes you got to stand still and allow God to fight your battle. God can't take care of stuff like you, but when God does it, he does it for good. Oh, help me somebody. 
Listen, stop trying to fight people. Stop trying to stop people who hang your name on, 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 on the highway. But listen, I declare, I declare, if you dare pray to God, I dare you to give it over to God. God can fix it better than you can. Listen, the Bible says, the Bible says that these, he says that you will see no more forever. Can I say it again? Forever. Forever. God will fix it so that they will not bother. And the Bible says, and the Lord, oh, the Lord will fight for you. And listen, can I, can I help somebody y'all? The Lord is fighting for you right now. Listen, it may seem like he's doing nothing at all, but he's fighting for you. Those cancer cells that are in, in our body, God is already fighting them away against you right now. My brothers and sisters, somebody's in the courtroom and they don't know how they're going to get out of this. God is fighting. Listen, you may not see it. I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard, nor has it entered the heart of men the things that the Lord store for you. Yo, I, I, I don't know how to end this, but I only can declare to you, God is doing a work in you so that you can remeasure your faith. You thought that you knew the Lord before this, but oh, my sister and brother, when you come out of this, you will declare for yourself that had it not been for the Lord on my side. Y'all, I declare, there's some things only God can do. And you got to allow God to be God. My brothers and sisters, even Jesus declared that, Father, allow this to pass from me. But in that same voice, he declared, not my will, but thy will be done. And he went out and he was hung on a tree at Calvary. Yeah. Bible says they put nails in his hands and ribbed in his feet, pierced him in his side. That blood and water came flowing down. But oh, my brothers and sisters, they declared on that day, surely this must be, this got to be the Son of God. But oh, I have it on record that early the third day morning, he that was dead was alive forevermore. And because he lives, whatever you face tomorrow, he'll be with you. He'll sustain you. He will keep you in the midst of it. But I dare you to trust him. And so I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, in this measure of faith, let down your guard. Sometimes you got to lose some people and let them go. Sometimes you got to move in a place where I can be still. <laughs> oh, y'all, what gets me the most, he says that you may see the salvation of the Lord. When God does this thing, you'll see it. You will testify what God is. God designed it so, so that you see. Listen, some folks say, I may die before. No, 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 no. No, you got to see it. You got to see it. You got to see it for yourself. And listen, sometimes we pray for children to come back. I just believe y'all. God allow you to see it. You got to trust. Y'all, that's some things that I've been asking God for for 21 years since I've been at this church. And, and, and yet I hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> but I still believe. <laughs> I still believe God to do it. I still believe God to fulfill all that he said he will do. Bible says some stuff, y'all, God's going to take care of and that you won't see it no more. But listen, the real matter is you. Will you trust God? One of my points for next week. Will you try God? In the midst of your trials, will you submit to him and him only? And the, the real question is you. Where are you in him? Will your faith allow you to trust him? today. God our Father, we come in your name. We thank you for all our eyes have seen, all our ears have heard. Thank you for the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you've given each of us a measure of faith. 
Oh God, I pray that even as small of a mustard seed, that we will use that faith to conquer whatever that stands before us, whatever that stands behind us. Oh God, we stand on your word. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. We stand on your word that declares that I will be the head and not the tail. We stand on your word that declares that I know the plans I have for you. For success and not for failure. Oh God, I stand on your word that declares that greater is he. Hallelujah. That is in you than he that is in the world. Oh God, show you, throw your weight around, oh God. Have your will in your way. And oh God, if there ones that have never acknowledged you as their Lord and their Savior, oh God, minister to them today. Make their lives brand new. God, we give it to you and we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The door of the church is open. I invite you to come by Letter Christian Experience, a candidate for baptism. If you're here today and you've never trusted him as your Lord and your Savior, I want to invite you to come at this time. Uh, if you're here this morning, you say, I've made Jesus my choice, but I must commit. I'm not in a committed church and I, I want to uh, commit myself to such. I don't believe you can find a better church. I invite you to come and be a part of this ministry. This invitation is to you. Won't you come just now? Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, time for you. Won't you come today? Persons present who have not received communion yet, uh, we, we set it out back. Uh, if you would just raise your hands. Amen. If you would just raise your hands. At last, 
sin di my savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he be that And the scriptures declared that they sing the hymn and went out on the Mount of Olives. 